Hello everyone and welcome to Skill Caps. I'm Notorious Dub and today I'm going to be going over easily my favorite agent and the agent that so many pros want to be meta because she's so unique and fun to play around, Viper. Now with that being said, I'm going to be going over everything from the most basic things to understand about Viper, what role you should be feeling for your team, all the way to the specifics of choosing Phantom or Vandal and giving you the most effective one-way lineups that you will see the best Vipers abusing whenever they play her. Quickly before we get into that though, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn those bells on so you can make sure to stay up to date and ahead of the pack. Also let me know in the comments how you feel about Viper currently and how you think Riot should change her if they need to at all. So first things first, Viper is a very unique agent, meaning she has a very unique playstyle. So let's talk about how you're actually supposed to play her. Unlike Brimmer Omen who can throw their smokes and then run into entry because their utility is gone, Viper wants to set up her smokes and then stay alive because she can continuously reuse her smokes and abilities so she can have major impact on the entirety of the round instead of just helping the team get onto the site initially. This means that Viper should be playing a support role behind the entry fragger and the second man. Viper should be setting up her utility on the site from distance, popping her utility, and let the entry fraggers get onto site, and she should be following as close behind as possible to help trade out and finish off kills whenever they find the contact on the site. On post plant though, Viper has two options. Viper can lock down a choke point, like CT entrance to Sea Long Haven, with her poison cloud and snake bite to make retaking from that area nearly impossible. Or she should be setting up her poison cloud on top of the bomb and then play just to stop the defuse because she can stop a defuse for about 16 seconds entirely with her poison cloud and snake bite combo. On defense though, Viper should be picking one area of the map and completely locking down all entrance to that area for the entire game. Now these should be critical points to the map like garage on haven, mid on split, b side on ascent, and a short on bind. Now with one ways and snake bites, Viper can easily stop enemies from pushing the area for over 40 seconds by staggering her snake bites with her one way and making the enemies not able to actually push through the area for the entire time. So with smart play and good utility usage, Viper can make that area of the map incredibly difficult to play around for the attacker team. Viper does struggle on retake though, so if at all possible, you're going to want to save your toxic screen to help your team retake the site if the attackers manage to take it, meaning that it's up to you to make the decision of whether you need to use your toxic screen to help stop the enemies from taking a site altogether, or save it just in case the attackers get a site wherever that would be on the map, and use your toxic screen to cut it in half and allow your team to retake it. Alright, now that we have the basic playstyle out of the way, let's talk about Viper's abilities and how you should be using them. So first off, we have Viper's Molly, Snakebite. Snakebite is Viper's first ability that fires a canister that shatters upon impact with the ground and creates a chemical zone that does 24 damage per second to all enemies inside that zone and inflicts the Fragile debuff. Now the Fragile debuff makes enemies take double damage from all damage sources for the duration, but the debuff ends as soon as the enemy steps foot outside of the puddle. This makes Snakebite incredible for stopping attackers from planning and stopping defenders from defusing the bomb. So if there's ever a situation where you can use it in one of these scenarios, you should immediately make use of it. The next best way to use Viper Snakebite is to clear out corners and flush enemies out of hiding because they will be peeking you with the fragile debuff and will be a free kill. And then finally, you can also use Viper Snakebite to stall out and make sure the enemies aren't able to push through while your smoke is down and you're recharging your toxin bar. Now staggering your poison cloud and snake bite allows Viper to effectively control the choke point for over 40 seconds. This forces the other team to either suicide rush through the smoke or choose a different option, so make sure you use the two correctly. And next up we have Viper's smoke ability that I was just hitting on a second ago, poison cloud. Now this poison cloud is very similar to brimstone or omen smoke, but it has a special trait that puts it one step ahead of both of them, decay. Decay causes enemies inside of Viper's smoke to take 15 damage per second for the entirety of the time that they are in the smoke, but once enemies leave Viper's smoke, they have a 2.5 second delay before they start to regain that health and shield back. This makes Viper so effective at cutting off choke points because it stops enemies from camping inside of the smoke waiting for a push, and weakens enemies who decide to rush through it, making them much easier to mow down once they get on the other side. Now Viper's Poison Cloud should be used most of the time as a one-way smoke for very important areas, like A Short on Bind and Garage on Haven, because it allows you that little bit of extra kill pressure and protection. Or the smoke can be thrown on the ground directly in the center of the choke point like Sea Long Haven, or Hook on Bind to force enemies to rush through the smoke into almost certain death for only a small chance at winning the fight whenever they come out of it. 
And then next we have Viper's very unique wall called Toxin Screen. This one ability is the most underutilized and most overpowered vision deniers in the game, and correct utilization of this ability can single-handedly win rounds and games if the enemy doesn't know how to properly play around it. Viper's Toxin Wall effectively splits anything that you want to split in half, like a side on split. Viper's Toxin Wall is able to completely cut off the entirety of ramps and heaven, allowing your team to focus solely on taking over the site together and getting into a post-plant scenario. And there are a ton of areas where you can get this much value out of Viper's Toxin Screen on attack and defense, but there is one thing to be aware of. Viper's retake potential is very weak, but her Toxic Screen is arguably the best retake utility of any agent, so you have to weigh your option of using it to defend more effectively or holding on to it to make retaking a site that much easier if the enemies attempt and successfully get onto a site. And finally, we have Viper's ultimate ability, Viper's Pit. Viper's Pit is one of the scariest abilities to actually play around, and it's basically a super amplified version of her Poison Cloud. It covers a huge area with smoke that decays all enemies that step inside of it, it obscures their vision, and outlines Viper's enemies in red so she can see them better than they can see her. Now, Viper's Pit is undoubtedly the best post-plant ultimate in the entire game, and the best ultimate to lock down an area on defense to ensure that enemies can't push through it. Viper's Pit also lasts forever, unless Viper leaves the pit for 15 seconds, and only after that 15 second absence, the pit finally falls. Now, general strategies for when to use Viper's ultimate is when you kill the bomb carrier on defense, or when you plant the bomb on offense. And then another great time to use it on defense because that's when some people struggle is to just lock down an entire area to make sure that your team can go stack another site and force the enemies into a bad site. Now most of the time what you're going to be doing is taking over mid control because a lot of maps actually rely on mid control very heavily. These are areas like mid on split, B side on haven, and short A on bind because if the enemies can't actually play around that area, your team doesn't have to worry about it and it makes the attacker's time that much more difficult because they're forced into something that they don't want to be forced into. Alright, now that the basics are out of the way, let's look a little deeper into how to actually play Viper round by round by looking at the role she should be playing for the team. Now Viper's primary goal is to be a complete nuisance for the enemy team by staying alive, triggering her utility over and over, and making the round difficult for the other team because they're forced to play around a utility that seemingly never ends. This means Viper should be playing the support for the team, backing up the people running onto the site, but Viper has many more capabilities than that. Viper is also really great at lurking because she has to set up her abilities before the team decides to push, and this is the reason some people don't like her because she is slower. But this also makes Viper very viable to throw her utility on a site and then lurk on that site whenever her team gets control of mid or any other area. This allows Viper to work very slowly and be very safe on her approach because her team is going for something else on the other side of the map and they always have the option to fall back and run to her for virtually a free side take when the enemies have rotated over or left someone here and you already have your utility set up to take the site then. So ultimately, Viper should be walking in behind the people making first contact when taking a sight, and when you're not taking a sight, she should be playing the lurker that way her team has another option whenever they get forced out of whatever they're trying to force. On defense though, Viper should always just be that agent that is locking down whatever important area of the map that your team needs locked down. So combining Viper with a Cypher, both locking down an important area of the map, Attacker side gets very difficult for the other team because they have two sites or two areas of the map that are vital that they just can't really play around very effectively. Now finally let's talk about some of the specific tactics that make Viper so much fun and the reasons that many pro players want her to be meta. Viper's post plant. Viper has one of the strongest post plants in the entire game because she can throw her poison cloud down on top of the bomb and use her snake bites to molly off the bomb up underneath. This allows Viper to stop enemies from defusing for a whopping 16 seconds, the most of any character in the game. And anyone being hit by the Poison Cloud's decay and the Snake Bite's damage dies in under 4 seconds, making it impossible to even get the bomb to half before dying. And then next up we have Viper's One Ways, the most effective ability at her disposal that she can use over and over every round. The thought process behind Viper's One Ways are to allow enemies to be seen by their feet at the bottom of the smoke letting you shoot them while they have no actual vision on you and don't know where the shots are coming from exactly. The best one-way spots are A side on bind, where you back yourself into the corner beside the box and aim at the far top left of the metal pole above the teleporter, giving you a perfect one-way that you can play on site or in cubby with. 
And then we have Garage on Haven, where you stand underneath the triangle, offset the door, and aim at the top of the wooden block in the middle of the frame above the doors. This gives you a perfect one way where you can see underneath the door from window room, so any approaching enemies have a long walk to actually get through that they can see you, while you have all of that time to actually be able to shoot them before they come in effectively. And next, we have the most round winning ultimate in the game, Viper's Pit. We've already been over the best times to use Viper's ultimate, and lineups are going to be your best friend for making your ult that much more effective, but basic strategies for playing around Viper's ult are going to be more important situationally. Now when you're playing inside of your ultimate, you want the enemies to have to walk through as much toxin as possible to be able to reach you. And creating choke points are the most effective for this, because you can block off the entirety of a bomb site and force the defenders to push through into your ultimate to contest the site. I'm thinking of B side on bind here, whenever the enemies have to approach from CT or elbow, if they want to approach from CT and you have your teammate watching elbow, they have to walk through your smoke for so long to get to the front of the bomb site to actually contest the site at all. You're also going to want to position yourself inside of your ultimate where enemies cannot get behind you, because you have a better vision radius with the enemies being highlighted red, giving you the advantage. Also, you want to make sure you give yourself somewhere to reposition to after you get a kill. That way the enemies can't blindly shoot through the smoke and kill you and then take away your pit from there. So generically, you want to force the enemies to push all the way through the smoke to find you and be as unpredictable as possible when playing around inside of it so you can't get randomly killed or visioned out. And don't forget, you now have 15 seconds of free time before you have to go back into the smoke. So give yourself an exit path and get out of there when you know the enemies are hunting you inside of it. And finally, we need to talk about the Phantom or the Vandal for effectiveness with Viper. Viper is going to be far better with the Phantom because all of her abilities do damage, making the damage difference irrelevant. And Viper's abilities favor close range engagement anyway, where it's just where the Phantom shines the most. As always, if you feel more comfortable with the Vandal, then feel free, it's not going to be a bad option, but the Phantom is going to give you way more viability when spamming through your smoke because it doesn't have tracers and they can't track you as well, and gives out more kill pressure when clutching out in high pressure situations. So, the Phantom makes you safer, more effective, and it gives you more kill pressure whenever you're spamming through smokes, while the Vandom just gives you that one tap potential from long range, which Viper doesn't really utilize that often because she wants to stay alive and bait the enemies into a bad close range engagement. So all in all, while Viper isn't picked as often and doesn't have as high of a win rate, most pros believe she will be more viable and come around into the meta when more people start to utilize her more effectively, and teams start learning how to play around her. So in a way, it's up to you guys to make Viper meta by learning her and showing her some love and rank when you get some of these strategies down pat. But before you go on your way, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn those bells on because we here at Skillcapped have a ton more comprehensive premium guides coming your way that you're going to want to stay up to date on so you can stay ahead of the pack. As always, I want to thank you for spending this little bit of your day with us. Thank you for watching and I'm Notorious Dub signing off.